Good morning, friends. Anne here. Got my cup of coffee, got the word of God. And today's reading is from Amos chapters 5 and 6. We're going to talk a little bit about Amos chapter 6 and then come back to chapter 5 because I think chapter 6 helps us understand a little bit more about chapter 5. So in Amos chapter 6, the prophet is speaking on behalf of God and telling the people what their sins are. Remember yesterday we said that the nation of Israel were surrounded by all of these pagan neighbors who were influencing them to do the wrong thing. Instead of Israel influencing the neighbors, the neighbors were influencing Israel. And in chapter six, it talks about what the nation of Israel is doing that is wrong, what they are prioritizing, what they are worshiping and spending their whole lives in pursuit of. It says this in chapter six, that they are lounging in luxury, that they're trying to be famous and popular, that they're sprawling out on ivory beds and lounging on couches, that they're eating the meat of tender lambs and the choice calves, that they're singing trivial songs at their parties and fancying themselves to be great musicians. They're drinking wine by the bowlful and they're perfuming themselves with fragrant lotions. Basically, they were trying to live for themselves, to please themselves at the expense of other people. So righteousness was nowhere to be found. Justice was nowhere to be found. And God was telling them that he was going to have to intervene, that he had given them all of these ways for them to come back to him and they had ignored it. And so now let's go back to chapter five. And I want to look at a, a one phrase that is repeated twice in verses four through seven and see what that speaks to us today. And four through seven, he says this. Now, this is what the Lord says to the family of Israel. Come back to me and live. Don't worship at the pagan altars at Bethel. Don't go to the shrines at Gilgal or Beersheba. For the people at Gilgal will be dragged off into exile. And the people of Bethel will, re will be reduced to nothing. Come back to the Lord and live. Otherwise, he will roar through Israel like a fire, devouring you completely. Your gods in Bethel won't be able to quench the flames. You twist justice, making it a bitter pill for the oppressed. You treat righteousness like dirt. Friends, here is what is happening with this passage. God is giving them the chance to come back to him and live. He says this place where you are living in pursuit of your own gain, in pursuit of wealth, in pursuit of comfort, all of that is leading to injustice and it is moving you away from the righteousness of God. Friends, I love that phrase, come back to me and live. I wonder if today when you hear those words, do you hear God speaking that to you in your own life? Are there areas of your life where you are living for yourself, where you're almost worshiping your own desires, where you are driven by the flesh? What are you worshiping in your life that is not God? He gives you the invitation to come back to him and live. Are you like the nation of Israel, worshiping your status and your influence, your wealth, maybe even your family? Are you worshiping even your church instead of worshiping God? Are you worshiping your church and the institution and the people and the comfort you have there? Are you worshiping your friends and your friend group? What are you living your life for? What are you spending your days doing? What are you spending your finances investing in? Friends, all of that shows who or what you worship. And if you are worshiping anything except for God, like the Israelites were doing in today's passage, I want you to hear him say this, come back to me and live. Friends, that is the only place that life is found is when we are living in Christ. Friends, come back to God and live. Have a good day.